There is still a lot of confusion around Tesla's new 4680 battery cells, but we now know the chemistry. We know it's inside them. We know what they weigh, and we know that there's actually one big difference that no one has been talking about between the 2170 cell and the new 4680 cells. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Hope you've had an amazing week. You know what? The world actually did get better this week. The news should have told you, but I'm sure they didn't in lots of ways. You know what? One of the really cool things that I've noticed is more and more people getting to work, whether that's by riding a bicycle or walking or taking an electric scooter. Rise in popularity of these, this kind of transport has meant less cars on the roads. And you know what? It's so much quicker for most people and so much cheaper to simply buy an electric scooter or something like that. Now, a few years ago, I bought an electric scooter off eBay. It was one of those Xiaomi, um, you know, the model that everyone has. Uh, I think they were about, I think I paid about 400 Australian dollars. So it's about 300 US dollars. And in only a few years later, that model now for the same price has double the range, double the range and double the power. That's what's happened, right? In the electric scooter market. Similar things are happening in the electric bicycle market and similar things will happen in the electric car market. Now we're seeing a similar progression with Tesla going from 2170 cells to 4680 cells, but the differences are actually not as obvious as what people think. Now there's a few things people are missing. One of them, these cells will last a lot longer than 2170 cells. No one is really pointing out that fact, I believe. So they're disappointed in the performance of the 4680 cells. But remember, longevity is extremely important. Number two, they are in fact lighter. Why? Well, one of the interesting things about these cells is they're actually very thick. The steel casing of these cells is much thicker than the 2170 casing. One of the key reasons for that is because they are structural batteries. The battery itself is structural. So Tesla made the cell wall much thicker. Now the limiting factor, and I'll put a link in the description below to their YouTube channel, has actually torn down a 4680 cell, taken them apart and looked at what's inside them. The chemistry is different. The anode, the cathode chemistry is different. And it's a bit of a shock. According to the limiting factor, Tesla's in-house 4680 battery cells come with NCM chemistry, meaning they have nickel, cobalt, and magnesium in the cathode. Now, interestingly, the material characterization indicates nickel content of 81.6%. That's quite a lot of nickel. However, because these batteries use manganese, that does mean these battery cells can potentially be using less lithium than what comparable cells would use. For example, lithium ion phosphate cells use quite a bit more lithium than these battery cells are using. Now we don't know exactly the amount of cobalt and manganese in the cathode. And to be honest, I was a little bit surprised that Tesla was still using cobalt in these cells, but the key is here, right? The limiting factor of taking this cell is actually six months old. Possible Tesla's newest model vehicles have a different chemistry in the cathode, the anode, and even in the cell itself, it's actually possible. Now, the really strange thing about their breakdown, their examination of these cells is, Tesla have used the dry electrode technology that they got from Maxwell Technologies when they acquired that company. Now, the main reason that Tesla paid, I think it was a couple hundred million dollars for Maxwell Technologies was simply to get their dry electrode coating technology. But bizarrely, Tesla have only used that technology on the anode and not on the cathode. People expected that they'd either use it on both the anode and the cathode or neither, but they're using it on one and not on the other. The other really strange thing and surprising thing was the anode has no silicon. Anode active material is graphite. That's another big surprise. Usually 10 to 15% of the anode is comprised of silicon because this enables anodes to have a higher battery capacity and energy density. So based on that information, right, you'd be thinking the energy density might not be that good, but actually it is very good. Energy density is somewhere between 272 to 296 watts per kilo. We don't know exactly yet, but it's a pretty close range, 272 to 296. Tesla's 4680 battery cell weight is 355 grams per cell. The estimated total capacity is 26.136 amp hours, while total energy is estimated at 96 to 99 watts. Now the rumors were 98 watt capacity, so it's more than likely it probably is 98 watts. This number of between 272 to 296 watts per kilo means it's comparable with some of the best cells currently on the market. It's not like revolutionary. It's not significantly better. It's just comparable with some of the best on the market right now. So to sum up, 
The cell uses nickel, cobalt, and manganese with 81.6% nickel content. Anode is graphite. There is no silicon. Dry battery electrode technology is used on the anode, but not the cathode. It has a tabless design. The estimated total capacity is 26.136 amp hour. Estimated total energy is between 96 to 99 watts per kilo. Energy density is 272 to 296 watts per kilo, and weight is 355 grams. Now, Troy Tesla said in February 2022 that there is a rumor that the first generation of Tesla cell is 98 watts, but the plan from Tesla is, right, that in the following years, energy density will improve by 10% in 2023 to 108 watts, another 10% the following year to 118 watts, well, that's an increase of 9.3% in 2024. Now, because of its size, it's much bigger, it's five times bigger, the 4680 cell stores five times more energy than the physically smaller 2170 cells currently used in Tesla Model Y and Model 3 vehicles all over the world. Of course, Tesla does use LFP batteries as well. So if you look talking standard range models, they don't come with 2170s. They come with Tesla's lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now, considering these rumors on energy density, that would mean this current generation is likely 276 watts per kilo energy density, Second generation next year, energy density will be 305 watts per kilo. Third generation the following year, energy density will be 333 watts per kilo. Now it's believed that in these standard range Model Y vehicles being manufactured in Texas right now, in the standard range all wheel drive, you can buy those for I believe about 62,000 US dollars in the US if you order them from Texas, if you're in a certain geographical location, Tesla is still not selling them all around the world or all around the US, it's only for certain areas. However, Apparently this standard range pack comes with 690 cells for a total of 67.6 kilowatt hours. Long range packs have 828 cells, meaning 20% more cells and energy. And the estimated range for those long range packs, once they're being built, they're not being built yet, by the way, you can't order a long range 4680 vehicle right now. You probably have to wait a few more months before those become available. But the estimated range for that version would be around 340 miles. Now, as I mentioned earlier in this video, the cell, walls are much thicker in this battery, which enable it to become a structural battery, but that does come with a weight penalty. Obviously more steel is used to manufacture the battery, makes it heavier. 10 to 15% is the approximate weight penalty as a result of the battery being structural. However, of course, there are some advantages to that. Having a structural battery means that Tesla will be able to save weight on the car at a structural level, making the energy density on the car level to be noticeably better. At least that's what CEO Elon Musk is saying. There's still a lot of confusion here because truthfully, these numbers don't really quite add up. We're still missing something. I believe Tesla's probably put a big buffer in. It's possible that the vehicles coming out of Texas right now can do a lot more range than they're actually being given. I think maybe in the next few months, maybe when Tesla sells more of these 4680 powered vehicles, they'll actually enable that range, you know, remove that computer restricted range. That's the only way to really make full sense of the fact that these vehicles only come with 279 miles of range. Range should be better than that, con considering the energy density of these packs and the fact that the cars are lighter as well as a result of their having a structural battery and using giga castings in the structure of the car, which obviously removes a lot of weight. More information is going to come out soon. And when that does, I'll update you guys with whatever that is. But right now, there's clearly still something missing here in terms of what's going on. I believe that thing that's missing is that Tesla is artificially restricting the range of these vehicles in order to not make them look too good to kind of prevent the Osborne effect where people say, oh, well, we don't want the old Model Y with 2170 cells. That's old. We want the new 4680. If Tesla restricts the range on these vehicles, it doesn't appear as though they're, you know, magically way better than the old version and people continue to buy the old version. Either way, though, to be honest, Tesla Model Y, in my view, is currently the best mid-sized SUV you can buy, period. Maybe the best vehicle you can buy a period anywhere on the face of the earth so i definitely recommend buying one if you're able to let me know in the comment section below what do you think do you know anything about this are you insider do you have any insider information do you have a tesla model y vehicle with 4680 cells if you do let us all know thank you for watching and have a great day Bye bye